So talking about installation there, um, normally it would have been the first thing I did, but B&Q didn't have any of this in stock. And I waited oh, a month or so. They still had any in stock like, locally. So I've ordered that. Um, so for a short wheel base for Vara, you're probably looking at about four bags of this. It costs about 19 quid, it was six quid to deliver it. So yeah, it saves the fuel going anyway. So you might as well just order it and get delivered to you. It actually came on a Sunday as well, so. Um, and then the King Span, I'll be putting in replace of this horrible fluffy stuff. Um, I'll talk about it quickly. This, um, I think this is the fiberglass stuff, but you can get rock wool and things like that. Personally, I don't like the rock wool. It absorbs moisture. This, because it's recycled plastic loft insulation, um, obviously it won't absorb moisture. And as long as your ventilation's good, if there is any condensation there, it should clear away. And this won't absorb it and then hold it against your metal so your van rots from the inside out um, the king span now I've, I, you're probably worth looking around shopping around pricing it up this is a 25 mil thick piece and it cost about 40 i think it was 44 quid for one sheet which has gone up a hell of a lot like everything else um but that was from wix um, I was just nearby. I don't want to be wasting an half an hour driving somewhere to save me a fiver. So um, if you can fit the 50 mil stuff in, it was only about a fiver dearer, which is really annoying. But obviously the width of these with some battens, I think 25 mil is about my limit and I don't want to go too thick because you lose a bit of headroom then. Um, so yeah, I've already started putting a bit of this in. And what I do is Try and get it as much up these pillows as you can, into every nook and cranny. Try not to compress it too much. The air in it helps with the insulation. You don't want it just shoved in tight. That's why I don't use it in the roof. Um, but yeah, pack as much as you can fit in. It's not that expensive and you'll appreciate it on the colder or even the warmer days because it helps keep your van cool. Um, I'll show you what you can use to hold this to the roof in a second. So a few ways you can stick your insulation to the roof of your van. Um, first one, which I recommend, is these. Um, they stick pins. You've got a self-adhesive pad on the bottom of them. Make sure you, your roof isn't too shiny. Obviously I've got no problem there. Uh, might need to rough it up a bit to make sure they stick. They don't seem to stick to nice shiny surfaces too well. Um, yeah, just stick them on. You've cut your piece of insulation to the size you want. Uh, push your insulation up and then you've got a sort of a square piece similar to that that goes on with a little hole in the middle. You bend it over and it holds it in place. Now, I have had some of them drop off when you just come unstuck, whether it's hot weather or whatever else. So uh, I'd recommend going, um, what's it called, belt and braces. So as well as doing that, um, CT1's a good thing. Put a few blobs of that on as well. Stick it on to hold it in place. You can cut a, a bit of a, a long stick, piece of timber, to the right size and wedge it up um, or you can get these um, they're a bit of an extravagance if you buy them building one van um, but they just make life so much easier if you've got a couple of those because they will help when it comes to putting your roof panel up and things like that as well um, yeah I always use them they come in really handy um, and another way so you can glue them you can pin them, you can do both. Also, and this is some pallet wood I've trimmed. <coughs> you can get thicker stuff, obviously, if you have got a bit of a, a short height van, 
the thinner the better. So I've got a nice thin piece. And where this goes along here, I'm going to be using these for battens, cheap, free. Um, but once you've got your panel in place, you can put some oops, that way. So it also holds your insulation up. Um, obviously be careful where you're drilling your screws through to hold that in place. Make sure there's no wires or anything there. Um, but once they're up, then you've got potentially three things holding it up because that'll hold it up as well. And then fill in the rest of the gaps for your buttons to hold your roof up after. It's better to screw in some buttons like that than try to put loads of screws everywhere. You don't know where there's going to be a gap when you're trying to put your clad in or your roof panel in on the top. Um, and to hold those in place, I tend to drill a pilot hole through. And I use these uh, self-drilling screws. Uh, if you have a good look at that, take a little screenshot and go to screw fix they should sort you out some of those um, obviously be careful on the length you get you don't want it going right through and then drilling into your outside panel um, these are 25 now i find with the short sorry the thin pieces of pallet wood you've got enough room to go there and then into the metal don't drill them too far. You don't want to make holes in your roof. Um, yep, yeah, so I'll carry on with that and I'll show you how it goes on another video when I've got everything in place. Lastly, when you're uh, cutting this, obviously you're cutting it to size, you've got lines to help you. Get your tape measure out, cut them, you're not going to get it to fit exactly, so a bit of self-adhesive spray, it's, uh, blah, blah, blah. what's it called? Impact adhesive by spray. Spray some of that where you want to do, pull a bit of this off, and you can put some of that in there as well. It's not going to hurt in small amounts, and also obviously you can fill in all those as well, so you're not missing out insulation on all those cross braces so pack them up as well when you screw it sorry when you drill in oh, and screw for that matter when you drill in you will find that if that is full of the insulation as you drill in it will start spinning that stuff around it will get stuck on the end so you'll need to make sure once you've made your little hole Hit the reverse and drill it back out that way. Um, makes life a lot easier. You might need to clean the drill bit every now and then. So I'm filling the channels with my bottle insulation. And uh, as you can see, the big holes tend to be there. So you've got a long way try to stuff it in there you need to get in all these bits so you pull little bits off stuff them in I'm afraid all you can do is keep poking it along I've tried putting some in there and pushing it along but it gets stuck about the middle <coughs> so yeah keep pulling a bit off poke it in and then Eventually, it'll be pretty full, and then you've only got two more to go. That's my roof insulation in. I've stuffed the gaps with the bottle insulation, and I've used the king span for the bigger pieces. I stuck it up with CT1, and I've used the battens to brace it a bit. I'll be adding more when I want to put the roof up. Like that. So I'm happy with that. Now I could tape all the gaps and things, but I think 
to be honest. I mean, I've stuffed the, the edges in a couple of places as well. Um, I think I ain't going to be able to stop getting condensation up there anyway. So I think it's better being able to get the air through to it so it dries out better. Um, I've just got to insulate the doors with a bottle of recycling now. And uh, that's the insulation done. When it comes to the door panels, you can get a proper lifting tool to pop it out from the edges, but use a couple of these. I'm using one obviously because I've got one hand spare. If you pop it in, give it a little twist, you should be able to carefully lever it out. Right there. And then it should pop back in after. When I take those off, I'm going to be carpeting them as well, just so it looks a bit nicer. So that's it for day two of insulation. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could do all this in one day if you tried, but I've got other work I've got to do as well. So uh, it's a bit of the time for this one. Bye for now.